Four more days. 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 While summertime brings us some beautiful warm weather, in terms of sports, it is a cold, cold, dark era. Basketball is over. The only sport that we have is baseball. Well, baseball is fine. It's kind of subject to some baseball nerds. And after, you know, I'm really only into like the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. But we are four days away from the first legitimate NFL game with fans in a stadium. And we are one week away from meeting up with all of our friends, our family, to party, to drink, eat lots of food that's terrible for you for Sunday. And I cannot even express how ridiculously excited I am for it. And now, teams in the NFL have almost finalized their rosters. I'd say they're about 98% finalized. There's going to be some... uh, I'd imagine there's going to be a few more transactions before the games start. But we're going to talk about some of the most surprising ones, some of the smartest ones. Um, you, You know, some are really, really surprising. So... Let's go ahead and address the white elephant in the room. Uh, the New England Patriots have cut D. Virgin. Yeah, it's a very surprising cut. Most surprising cut of all the offseason. So. Yeah, um, we're being sarcastic. So Cam Facetious. Newton. Facetious. Ooh, good, good word. That's, a, uh, that's an SAT word right there, it which I, I didn't do very well on. But Not a, Yeah, me neither. But, you know, nonetheless, we learned. All right, so let's talk about Cam. Um, it's interesting. It's really, really interesting because we got to remember that Bill Belichick is Bill Belichick and he's probably going to end up being right. However, this is still weird. I have my grievances with this. Well, so, yeah, yeah Justin, f- go ahead. Well, he was projected to be the starter. And so, like, while Cam was not good by any means last year, throwing eight touchdowns, 10 picks, he also still rushed for 12 touchdowns. And, and so- that doesn't tell the whole story because he went to battle with an absolute dog shit roster. Yeah, like, like. Jacoby Johnson was his best or Jacoby Myers was his best receiver and he's not a good receiver on top of that. Like the whole team had opted out. That was not a good team. And like, while he wasn't efficient and he looked like hurt the whole season, like his throwing motion was off in the preseason. He looked good. His throwing motion was good. Like I, I saw nothing wrong. I was, I was wrong because I absolutely was like, Oh yeah, they'll for sure start the season. I mean, with dude, Cam he Newton. was more than good in preseason, dude. He was looking really, really good. Yeah. Like his last game, he went like eight for nine with the TD and you're like, okay, well, Hey, he'll be the starter. That makes sense. Sure. That's not against the real defense, but it also shows that it's like, he's going to, he would totally be worthy of being a starting quarterback. And so here's one of the reasons why I have issues with this. And so, Ultimately, I think there is something that we don't know. So I don't want to just completely paint the picture like the Patriots are evil and they cut Cam because I think there's more to it. I think if I had to guess, I'd imagine Bill because Bill and Cam like each other. I, I'd imagine that Cam went to or sorry, Bill went to Cam is like, are you OK with being a backup? I would be very surprised if Cam said yes and he was OK with that. I genuinely don't think sure that not being vaccinated definitely had an impact on that. But I don't think that was what the difference maker was. I think that he was like, I want to start Mac. What I've seen in Mac is good enough that I think he's going to be competitive at the next level. But let's talk about that a little bit. Because Mac Jones, he was of the rookie quarterbacks. He was the, he had the highest passer rating. But does that tell the whole story? Because he, he hasn't faced a real defense yet. WFT, they didn't play, uh, they didn't play Bryce Young. They didn't play Montez Sweat. Um like you know i don't we we don't really have that much of a pool of plays from mac jones to really be like oh he's ready to go against the bills defense he's ready for the dolphins defense because yeah that's a whole different story and and uh, and, uh, and i will say that like we no one was like oh like for sure he's gonna be nails like he looks like the best you know quarterback of out of anyone here like no one thought this guy was a world beater but i'll say this he looked very good and um at the end of the day bill belichick has six rings so um there's that there's six that. he's got six and it's the whole hand plus his pinky and and it's not like this is like you know looking at it like it's an egregiously stupid decision at all you know it's it, it's not like you know it's not like a um oh my god what was his name like a johnny menzel would be like, oh johnny menzel starting in front of cam newton then we'd be like holy shit what the absolute fuck are you doing 
Yeah. But another reason why I have an issue with this is because uh, injuries happen. I, I'm not saying he's going to get Joe Burrowed because the Patriots have a really good old line, but they still happen. You never know. Mac Jones is a little bit more mobile than Tom Brady. Well, let, 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 let me kind of put this a little bit in perspective, though, because Mac Jones, according to PFF, had a 92.2 rating, which means his, that's his overall efficiency. A really good rating is an 80. Yeah. He had a 92.2. And I'll, and I'll give him, it's preseason. I understand. You're playing backups. Well, you're still, doing well against those backups. You're still coming from college straight to the NFL and then just absolutely fleecing people in the preseason. Do I think he's going to come out and be like an all-pro quarterback this year? No. But I do I think he's absolutely like in a position to succeed. And I think, you, you know, Bill yeah. signed two great, ty- two really good tight ends, you know, like I, maybe Nikhil Harry takes that step, but like you know, they I, signed I'm a thinking, bunch of guys, you know, cause think about how Justin Herbert went off last year. Sure. You know, he, he definitely had some improvements on, he needs some improvements on his efficiency, but uh, his freakish athleticism and his arm saved him a lot. Mac Jones, he, he you know, he's smart, but he doesn't have the freakish athleticism to save him on plays. I, I here's my thing is I don't think it's gonna be needed. I think that line is so good. Like like Isaiah Wynn was the eleventh best tackle in the league last year. Michael Owenewu was the eighth best guard. Shaq Mason's been a beast. Like they I, got Trent Brown back. Like that line's gonna be very good and possibly the best line in the league. I, I absolutely agree with that. I see them running the ball forty to fifty times a game. And they're gonna split it between the three running backs because that's realistic. You can do that. Absolutely. And like and and then on top of it, they still have, you know, uh James White, the receiving back. So like I, I don't think he's in a bad position at this point. I think he's actually in a very good position. We'll see how good New England's defense is because that that'll be interesting. But yeah, that, that's a top f- James White is like a top five check down option in terms of running backs in the NFL. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think he, he's probably the best receiving back in the NFL. Yeah. He, oh, he, like one of the things he's known for is having hands that are super that, reliable. That's literally all he's known for. I don't even think he has a thousand rushing yards. He, he mm. probably does. But let's uh, talk about this most surprising. Okay. Uh, wait, hold on. I do, I do want to say one last thing about that. So, did you know that Mac Jones jerseys sold out within one hour of Cam getting cut? Yeah, no, I saw that. That's, Dude, I mean, you guys were not riding with Cam. Yeah, you guys were like, not riding with. Cam. No, Get and I don't the think anyone. I think everyone just trusts Belichick to the point where they're like, "Hey, if Cam's the guy, Cam's the guy." They just trust him. Mm-hmm. Let's get to some of the more like su- like I, I wouldn't say more surprising, but other surprising cuts. So, uh, one, can I can I say one thing also real yeah. quick, and then I'm like, I'm gonna let you go. Uh, the thing is, is I would say only a handful of these cuts were really like changing to the team, but I'd say all of them have an impact, uh, uh, definitely an impact. So, so go, go yeah, ahead absolutely. With, yeah, and, and, the and one of the, obviously like the things about drafting someone in their rookie year is that it's pretty much a guaranteed roster spot because they invested time in you. They invest money in you. They invested scouting resources. They chose you with a resource that like, is highly valuable to a lot of franchises other than the Rams. There's a lot of stock in a draft pick. So so when it when when you're the Chicago Bears and it's Allen Robinson and then a bunch of guys that look like me and you cut your sixth round bunch of children. rookie, Daz Newsom, because he wasn't impressing in camp. What other receiver was impressing in camp? Well, well, I think a big reason why is because Daz Newsom was slowed down with a shoulder injury in preseason. But also, we got to see that in, in his last two years at UNC, he had 1,700 receiving yards for 17 touchdowns. That, yes, behind Allen Robinson, that is probably their three, number two it, receiving option. He had 1,700 yards in 22 games. Yeah, and, and sure, Allen Robinson's great. I, I think that he's a very solid number one receiving option in, in the NFL. But they need more. They don't have weapons on offense. They don't have a good O line. They don't have really any great running backs either. Yeah, and I wouldn't say any of the running backs are great, and I think that offense is just going to be the same thing until Justin Fields finally gets in there and they start drafting for him. Mm-hmm. They don't even have like a Jordan Howard, you know. So that, that would have been really clutch. <laughs> well, the next guy I want to talk about, the Bears could easily use Travis Fulgham. Travis Fulgham led all Eagles receiving receivers last year in yards. And I believe yeah. catches. How ironic. Yeah. He only had two drops on 38 catches. And they cut him for J.J. Ortega Whiteside. How is ass. Dude, he's ass. He sucks. He's ass. He sucks, he's ass. Dude. 
Like he was a second round pick, and when he came out, I was like, "Yo, this guy might be a stud." He sucks, dude. That, he that's sucks. news to me. I didn't know he was a second round pick. He's a second rounder. He's ass. Ugh. And and you cut Travis Fulgham, JDR Sega Whiteside probably I think had like less than ten catches last year. In terms on PFF, in terms of uh, receivers, actual actually measurable for this, he was bottom ten. Yeah, he was awful. He was and like 115 out of 125 or something. The, the one thing I'll say is the Eagles, uh, is that Travis Fulgham had a 57% catch rate on passes mm-hmm. thrown his way. But also he was having passes thrown from Carson Wentz and Jalen Hurts. So it's not like these were dimes. They yeah. weren't dimes. They were off. Not they were yet. off. They were over here. And they're like, well, that's a target. And I go, he's like, I mean, yeah, in the sense that I'm the closest in vicinity to where that ball ended up. That yeah. might count. But other than that, like, what did you expect, dude? I like I you can't get on the safety shoulders to catch balls. Like it's not I don't think that's allowed. But believe it or not, believe it or not, especially with the new rules in the NFL, it's like you if you touch someone, it's like you get fined. Oh well, yeah, well <laughs> only if you're on defense. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh before we before we continue, I will say it like it was really cool uh what Tom Brady said uh in an interview with none other than Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, and I think Gronk was there too. So, you know, these guys are offensive guys. And so for Tom Brady to say this, so, well, let me say what it, he actually said. He thinks it's unfair the way that defensive players are penalized when they hit quarterbacks. And, you know, because ultimately it's probably a mistake on the offensive line part or the receiver or the quarterback. And so when these guys are making legal hits, football is a violent sport and they're still getting fined and flagged for it. It's wrong. It's wrong. And I really like that Tom Brady had that mindset but anyway so let, let's talk about another surprising one uh let's go to your lions brashad perriman brashad perriman was signed a one-year five million dollar deal this offseason our r- remaining receivers are tyro williams khalif raymond a return man he's our number two tyro williams is very underrated though yeah he hasn't played in two seasons though so it doesn't even fucking matter yeah. and he like he had one really good season with the chargers that was it he hasn't done anything ever since and so we signed brashad perriman who's like a burner, who drops a lot of balls. He was a first-rounder in 2015. We cut him. He was hurt all camp, and then he dropped us several balls in camp, and then the fucking Bears got him. He's fucking ass, in my opinion. Like, he had two seasons where it's like, oh, you might redeem yourself, but, dude, he's just a streaker. He's just a fast guy that runs down the sideline. He doesn't have great hands. He doesn't have good route running. It's none of those things. It's literally just that he's fast. In an ideal world, if you're able to pay him like one million or one point five, and just have him literally be a decoy deep threat, teach him how to catch some deep balls, and that's it. Yeah, you know, like kind of like a you know, like I'm gonna say this because I'm a Chargers fan, Jalen Guyton. That's all he does, and he's great for it. He he he'll get you two or three fifty yard passes uh, like a year e- easily. Like he's a stud. All right, uh, let's talk about another one. Uh, so I I fuck this guy's name up every time I say it, but. If he had or Denning Bow. Yeah. For the he well, he was on the Giants, but he, he was, was from the Giants. Vikings. He got cut after signing a one year five million dollar deal. Or sorry, two point five million dollar deal, which was actually kind of a cool sign. They're like, hey, this guy could beef up our pass rush. Totally. Basically, Joe Judge has no idea what type of defense because he signs this guy. It wasn't like the coaches change. It wasn't like this guy didn't play well. They're like, oh, we just you just don't fit our defense. I mean, in, in addition to the other things that Joe Judge doesn't know how to run. Yeah, and it's not like he put on 100 fucking pounds in the offseason. He played the exact same way he's always been playing. And then they were like, oh, yeah, we just fucked up. It's like, dude, you're stupid. That was stupid. That was really dumb. Yeah, especially for not paying him that much. What was the point of signing him if you're just going to cut him? It doesn't make sense. So just doing dumb stuff. So uh, let's move also to another NFC East team. Jimmy Moreland got cut from WFT. Jimmy Moreland, he was a... Uh, Wait, uh, safety or corner? Corner. Corner. Uh, he got cut for Troy Apke, the first corner in, what, 20 years to not have m- melanin Since in his skin? 2002. Since 2002. Uh, you know, it truly, yeah, this is progress, right? Total total progress for the world. Yeah, that was oozing with sarcasm, by the way. Uh, yeah, don't cancel us. Just, just want to make that clear. And, and so this is weird. So because Jimmy Moreland, yeah, he was banged up last year, but he played 10 games in those 10 games. He had two picks and he had like six or seven passes deflected. And it's just, you know, it's weird. I, I, I think that from, you know, the Washington football team, you know, their defense is so good. It's always good to have a, a, another corner. They run a lot of man defense and uh, man, man coverage and man coverage is 
by far the most exhausting thing to do on defense. You cannot have guys doing man coverage the entire game. If you want proof of that, look at the Patriots and Falcons Super Bowl 28 to 3. Literally, that, that's a great example. Don't, yeah. So uh, l- moving on, let's talk to a- another uh, defensive back that was a really surprising cut, and it was actually by the Bills. Is Rashad Wild Goose? Well, by you got an awesome name, dude. But this is weird because the uh, obviously, <clears throat> yeah, sure they got Tre'Davious White. You know, is is really really good. But this is their rookie corner that was drafted in the fifth round. You know, in which you know it's not really a great look when you have guys that are fifth rounders getting cut in general. Uh, but Sure, the Bills have a stack defense, but they run a nickel. For those that don't know, a nickel involves five defensive backs. And uh, and thing is, is like if you don't, they don't have many corners. And so, like you're gonna have two safeties, and you're gonna have three corners, two on the sideline. If any of these guys get injured, that's a problem. These guys are gonna get winded at the end of the game. I I don't think that's a very smart cut. Sure, the Bills are they're stacked. They're gonna be really really good. But this guy could have been the piece that could you know help you beat the chiefs you know help you beat those those games you're gonna have to you have to play the patriots dude like the patriots are gonna be good this year whether you want to like bill belichick had a horrible roster last year and led them to a seven and nine record yeah the patriots i i thought the dolphins had a better chance than the patriots to go into the playoffs and that's flip-flopped i definitely think the patriots have a better chance but um, that's uh, but I digress. I want to talk about one of the, the two picks that I that were both rookies that kind of got cut. So Quincy Roche was a beast at Temple and they played at Miami, you know, played less games than usual last season um, and was a sixth round pick, which he should have gone way higher. He was ranked way higher going into the draft. You know, Quincy Roche went to Miami, had 30 sacks over his four years at Temple and Miami. Yeah, dude, he's all over the place. Yeah. The field. Cut before the season by the Steelers. And I get that they have a lot of pass rushers, so I kind of understand. Forces it. fumbles, he recovers fumbles. Yeah, he's a disruptor, and and while he, you know, six round is like, oh well, yeah, like it's pretty late, and he was a very much a wow, I can't believe this guy fell this, and then he gets cut, and now he's on the Giants, and the Giants were like, the Giants were inside of the practice squad, they put him on the active roster, they were like, oh yeah, absolutely. And so, and, and which brings us, which is like well, someone, and, and sure, the Steelers are over the cap, you know. And so, so it doesn't affect, but he's not getting paid that much. He's getting paid four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year. So like, get the fuck out of here yeah, on yeah. cap shit. It's like, oh, we need to make space for TJ Watt. It doesn't matter. You're gonna pay him like a billion dollars. So. Well, and and let, let I want to talk about this one too. Des Fitzpatrick, the fourth round wide receiver by the Titans, that got waived, which is really interesting to me because over the last two drafts, they they're already real have real confident in the receivers. They already have three picks gone so they have their seventh round pick from last year their first round pick isaiah wilson from last year and their fourth round pick des fitzpatrick from this year all waived that's horrible fucking drafting is what that is that's horrible drafting you're wasting resources so at this point like i don't trust your draft picks because if you're taking a guy in the fourth round because you feel so good about him and then you're fucking waving him like i get that training camp tells a lot but i also understand that like Hey, not everyone's first training camp is going to go fucking nails, dude. It's just how it works. Like, it's football. Like, you're moving, like, you're taking these kids out of a college environment, putting them in the NFL, giving them a bunch of money, and then you're like, hey, you better perform this second or you're fucked. Like, that's just, it doesn't make sense to me. Okay, that was a good rant right there. I enjoyed that. Uh, can I talk about the Chargers real quick? Yeah, go for it. So, not all of these are bad cuts. There's something that made me extremely happy. Michael Badgley, the man that lost us at least three games last year, has finally been cut from the Chargers. I don't know why it really took this long, uh, but last year, Michael Badgley, if he would have made another field goal against the Chiefs, the Bucks, the Saints, all deep playoff teams, we would have beat all of them. The Chargers would have been uh, ten and six. We were seven and nine. We would have been ten and six if Michael Badgley literally just made these kicks. And so I, we got. Uh, Oh, uh, Tristan Viscano. Uh, the, the, the guy's good. And so, like, I'm, I'm stoked about him. There's one that I kind of have mixed feelings about, which is Tyron Johnson. You know, I, I feel like the Chargers are saying that they're really faithful with their draft pick and Josh Palmer. And he was good. But Tyron Johnson, the Chargers had tons of injuries last year. And Tyron Johnson was a really good second and third option when the Chargers didn't have Keenan Allen or they didn't have, uh, fuck, what's his name? Uh, Mike Williams. 
you know, he, he, he was he was a good second option. So it's a weird, it's a really, really weird cut, and he wasn't getting paid that much. And the Chargers aren't in a bad cap spot. So, you know, maybe maybe they're thinking that they have guys to pay soon. You know, depending, I mean, if Derwin James can play the whole season, Derwin James is probably going to be getting a fat contract soon, I would imagine, because, like, it all depends on his injuries. But, like, you know, he's, yeah, I mean, dude, when he's healthy, he's he's like a... He's, he's, Paul, he's Paul Amalu light. He's Palomalu light. You know, I'm not going to say he's Troy Palomalu, but he gets used the same way that he does. Yeah. Um, so let's, uh, oh, let's, I mean, I mean, I know we were talking about the Bills earlier, but we got to talk about one more guy that was cut, and it was Jacob Hollister. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, this one's weird because the Bills, they're, they're stacked at receiver, but they, they don't have tight ends. And having a tight end is really useful. They have two tight ends on their roster. One of them is Dawson Knox. I believe the other one is Tommy Sweeney or something like that. But neither of them are good. And Jacob Hollister had like, I don't know, like 400 something yards last season. He can catch the ball. Like he's not the best tight end in the league by any means. You know what I mean? He's 28. Like, he, you know, he's been in the league a couple of years. But he's someone that could have absolutely helped You know what Josh tight ends Allen. do is they get touchdowns. Yeah. And in, he, in the red zone, tight ends are such a great weapon to have. It's because tight ends, a good tight end, a linebacker can't cover them because they're too fast. Or a corner can't cover them because unless you're a tall corner like Antonio Cromartie or something, you're not going to be able to like jump over a guy at six five. It, it's just it, it's just simple anatomy. So we got that uh, Jacob Hollister, uh, and I think last but not least, we should talk about John Brown. Yeah, that that one was a weird cut too. You want to talk about that one a little bit? Yeah, I'll talk about John Brown because he's someone that I always pick up in fantasy. I love John Brown. He's a great fucking streaker, but he can late, also late, run good, good late pick. To get. Yeah, absolutely, and and. You know, he's only two seasons, res- uh, you know, removed from a 1,000 yard season. Um, so he's only two, two, one, one season removed from a 1,000 yard season. We apologize about that. We got some puppies. Yeah, we got some puppies. Around, so one almost, season removed yeah. from a 1,000 yard season with the Bills, where he had a bunch of receptions. He was hurt all last year. And so that's totally understandable why, you know, you get released and stuff like that. Um, but at the end of the day, like, it's not like you had all these great options. You know, you had Henry Ruggs, you had a few other guys. But at the end of the day, you know, it was you just didn't have the guys. I guess John Brown wanted to be released, which makes sense. But like you could have still had him as a great third receiver and he would have been awesome and cheap. That would have been super clutch. But, you know, like I I would say other than I would say really other than like maybe like Daz Newsome and like Travis Fulgham, that none of these are really like game changing things, but they're enough that they're that final piece that these teams need. Uh, nonetheless, I legitimately wish all these teams the best luck. Holy fuck. I don't know if you guys can hear these dogs right now, but they're going insane. Uh, but anyways, uh, best of luck to these teams. Uh, thank you for watching.